thank you for the invitation to join this global summit on cancer and war. It's a pleasure to be with you guys and to present this experience that I faced and also I noticed from the publication. Uh, my talk will be about oncology and war in Iraq, especially in the last uh, four or five decades. I have nothing to disclose. My objectives is to have some historical milestones about cancer and wars in Iraq, cancer trends and wars in Iraq, cancer care services and wars in Iraq, current status of cancer trends and care services in Iraq, and some take-home messages. So regarding the historical milestones, before 1980, the Iraqi health system was described by the UN as the best healthcare system in the Middle East with respect to the infrastructure, medical expertise, and universal health coverage through its free of charge services, as published in The Lancet. The radiation services, for example, which is my field, primarily started with the diagnostic X-ray in November 1919, where early diagnostic services launched in Baghdad. Few years later, radium and superficial X-ray uh, therapeutic services were added to the Radiology Institute in Baghdad, established in 1927. In the same year, also, the Iraqi Royal Medical College as the first uh, medical school in Iraq was established in 1927. Then radiotherapy pioneers became more visible in 1950s with the foundation of the Iraqi Atomic Energy Commission and the Cobalt Project in 1956. This is uh, the price of the fees of the, um, of the uh, diagnostic uh, tests in the Indian rupiah, which is the currency in the 1920s till 1932. The Iraqi Cancer Society started its activities in 1962. A specialized nuclear medicine institute was established in Baghdad in 1960s with a number of machines, varian and cobalt teletherapy and superficial X-ray therapy, followed by uh, other two institutes in Mosul and in Basra in 1970s. Progress in oncology and radiotherapy continued through 1980s till early 1990s with the addition of the 4 megavoltage and 10 megavoltage variant Linux of multiple electron energies and so on. So when I started my residency, in 2002, there was two oncology and radiotherapy centers in, in Iraq, one in Mosul, my city, and the other one in Baghdad. The Iraqi Cancer Board also established in 1982. The Mosul Oncology Society established in 2005, the Iraqi Medical Physics Society and the Iraqi Society for Clinical Oncology in both in 2011. The Iraqi Society of Radiation Oncology in 2014. Um, regarding the education diploma of medical radiotherapy, the MRT established in 1984. And uh, in the last decade, um, board certification programs in radiation oncology and in medical oncology and in surgical oncology and in pediatric oncology um, were added. If we come to the conflicts in the last four decades, the Iran-Iraq war between 1980 till 1988, um, the Kuwait-Iraq Gulf War in 1991, the sanctions and the embargo from 1990 after the invasion of Iraq to Kuwait uh, till 2003, from 2003, the US-Iraq war and volatile security till 2011, from 2014 to 2017, the uh, ISIL or ISIS Iraq war was also happened. And you can imagine, like all these um, can easily destroy uh, any health system, including the care, cancer care system. Another uh, picture showing the establishment of the um, Iraqi modern um, government um, in 1920 uh, 
and the healthcare system with the collaboration of the British physicians. The first dean of the medical school was from UK, Mr. Anderson. Um, from 1950s to 1980s, uh, sophisticated cancer apparatus was developed. From 1990 till 2003, this is the most um, like remarkable period of time in terms of deterioration, I can say. And I was like living this period of time. I was in the secondary school and in the medical school, and then in early career as a physician. I finished my medical school in 1999. And then from 2003, uh, the present till the present time, the after the US invasion and the uh, also ISIS um, occupation and uh, volatile security. And many specialists fled the country, unfortunately. Uh, and also the availability of the oak been decreased. And if we come to the trends of cancer, this is just a snapshot. Uh, before the last war of 1990, uh, for, of 2003, the um, top 10 cancers in Iraq as from the Iraqi Cancer Registry, as it is here, breast, lung, bladder, and non-Hodgkin lymphoma, leukemia, larynx, skin, brain, and stomach, and connective tissue. We can see that the leukemia and CNS, which used to be in the fifth and eighth rank, now in 19, uh, sorry, in 2004, jumped to the second uh, as leukemia and CNS as the um, just one year after the uh, Iraq war in 2003 with the US. And then it comes returned back a little bit uh, in 2010. And if we come to see here in, in the sidebar, it returned further back to 2018, leukemia number four and uh, brain CNS number six. So the possible reasons of this change in the trend of cancer of the leukemia and the CNS is the environmental uranium heavy metal pollutants. In Fallujah, little is known about the types of the weapons deployed but reports began to emerge after 2005 of a sudden increase in cancer and leukemia rates. In Basra, it is known that the Basra region was exposed to environmental insults, including chemical weapons agents, pyrophoric depleted uranium, and the non lecomogene benzene, as well as ongoing undifferentiated water and air pollution. If we come to the services and the affection, Carol Sikora from the WHO he visited uh, the country and he wrote uh, uh, an editorial at the BMJ. And he said that it was immediately clear that there were staggering deficiencies in cancer treatment facilities because of the United Nations sanctions. A cancer center without a single analgesic, a radiotherapy unit where each patient needs one hour under the machine because of the radiation source is so old, because of the cobalt source was not replaced, which should be replaced in every three, uh, in every five years. Now, our source of cobalt, when I joined in 2002, uh, I joined the Center of Radiation Therapy in Mosul. They told me this cancer, so this cobalt source have been not replaced since 15 years. And children dying of curable cancers because drugs run out are all accepted as normal. Somehow cancer care has become a Cinderella services. Requested radiotherapy equipment, chemotherapy drugs, and analgesics are consistently blocked by the United States and the British advisors. There seems to be rather a ridiculous notion that such agents could be converted into chemical or other weapons. Whatever the political legitimacy of the embargo, the needless suffering of those with cancer is an unacceptable outcome. The first planned comprehensive cancer center supposed to be in 2002, which was for me like an, a dream to be specialized in this center. However, all this halted by the 2003. Till recently, October 2023, the Iraqi Cancer Board with the president of the Iraqi Cancer Board, which is the minister, who is the Minister of Health, announced that we will establish a comprehensive cancer center. So imagine the delay. After 20 years, now they return back to this 
um, plan uh, that was supposed to be done in 2002. Um, when I started in 2002, there was no brachytherapy. There was no 3D CRT conformal radiation therapy and three outdated uh, cobalt um, and all Linux in total. So just in Mosul here in the Nineveh and in Baghdad. And after 10 years, slow improvement. And still there was no brachytherapy, there was no IMRT and six relatively new Linux in total. Uh, one in Soleimani at that time, and one in Erbil, one in Nineveh, and three in Baghdad. And of course, the cancer burden on the patients are tremendous, unbelievable. And there are many drivers um, for the cross-border treatment. Many of the patients traveling abroad to get the treatment uh, due to the human resources, overworked and under-resourced medical staff, the therapeutic and diagnostic shortages, chemotherapy agents and diagnostic tools in Iraq uh, were only sporadically available, destroyed facilities and blocked roads many times, and uh, sometimes because of the visa regulation, so some patients go to Lebanon, for example, easy to have the visa rather than other countries, and sometimes the recommendation of the families, these are the drivers of the cross-border treatment. Uh, recently, we published this paper about the cancer um, of cancer in five Iraqi provinces: uh, Nineveh, Ambar, Kirkuk, Salah al-Din, Diyala, uh, occupied by uh, completely or partially by the ISIL or ISIS. And uh, we noticed that in 2020, just three years ago, cancer of an primary become one of the top 10, unfortunately, in, in Nineveh, while it is not in, in other uh, Iraqi provinces because of the deficient uh, Iraqi, uh, because of the deficient care facilities, unfortunately, because Nineveh was completely occupied by the ISIL. And then the, also the liberation of this uh, cost a lot on the healthcare system. If we come to see the barriers of um, patients uh, can suffering from cancer during the, these conflicts, we can classify them into financial barriers, structural barriers, and cognitive barriers, uh, funding, affordability of care, uh, destruction and inaccessibility of facilities, therapeutic and diagnostic shortages, uh, workforce and human resources, lack of national guidelines and awareness programs, and also the cognitive barriers, awareness and knowledge and attitudes and beliefs. What is the current state of cancer? Uh, we can see that this map is showing the radiotherapy uh, facilities mainly. The chemotherapy facilities now is, is, is almost in all of the Iraqi provinces but the radiotherapy facilities uh, is not. And we can see here that the, across um, the Iraqi map, we have um, these 52% um, of the Iraqi land, um, five provinces, 27% of the Iraqi population have nothing from radiation perspective. And uh, the people from these regions either to need to travel to other places or to abroad. In total now, we have 34 megavoltage machines, 25 in the public sector and nine in the private sector, um, three brachytherapy suites and uh, four gamma knife, and uh, besides other megavoltage uh, in the process now. What is the availability of the megavoltage worldwide? We can see that um, Iraq is one of the countries uh, equipped with less than one machine per million while we need about 80 megavoltage machines based on either the population, 40 million needs about 80 machines, or based on the number of, of the patients, if we can say that we have 35,000, uh, uh, 35, 3,500 populations, then we need about 70 uh, megavoltage uh, so this is based on from the 2020 global can data. We have about 40 million. We have about 35,000 cancer patients and new cancer patients. We have about 20 
um, cancer deaths. And in Iraq daily, around 100 patients will be diagnosed with cancer. And this means about um, four patients per an hour. If we compare the top 10 cancers in Iraq here in this bar with the top 10 cancers in three neighboring countries and three non-neighboring countries, USA, Germany, and Japan, we can see that in 2020, the leukemia is superior in Iraq compared to other countries. And also uh, the brain CNS, apart from Iran, the CNS is number seven, now CNS is number eight. But um, regarding the mortality to incidence ratio, the Iraqi ratio is 0.58. It's less um, than half of the US ratio, which is 0.27. And this is really need to be addressed by uh, the uh, policymaker in order to improve the uh, mortality to incidence rate and decrease it to as much as possible. In Kuwait, it is 0.45. Um, in Iran, now it is 0.6. And we know Iran also is under uh, sanctions. And uh, so obviously, the sanctions and embargo may be providing more burden than the only the war itself because the war could be transient but the sanctions can extend for many years and this lead to the further deterioration of the cancer outcomes despite the challenges we were successful to establish the first um, uh, board certification in radiation oncology in 2013 till 20 17 uh, at the Gianova Cancer Center. We collaborated with many international uh, individuals and many authorities to make our um, program of high level. We enrolled uh, the residents uh, in the uh, ACR, American College of Radiology, in a training exam um, with their peers in the United States and Canada. And uh, obviously one of our residents achieved 68% while his peers in the States, 65%. And we did some um, international um, meetings, including Best of Astro was the first one in the Middle East in 2015. Take home messages that cancer trends in Iraq have been affected by the wars and conflicts, obviously. The cancer care services also has been impacted due to wars, embargo, sanctions, occupation, and volatile security. Despite the conflicts and challenges, the Iraqi people are passionate about improving. Currently, we have 34 uh, functional external beam radiation therapy, mega voltage machines, three bracket therapy suites, and four gamma knife machines, beside functional uh, specialized board training programs, radiation, pediatric, and adult medical and surgical oncology. There's still a need for improvement in terms of quality, quantity, accessibility, acceptability, and uh, especially in the deprived regions. Areas that need more attention are human resources and the qualifications, national cancer guidelines that use multidisciplinary approaches, site-specific specialists, care, cancer patients' rights, um, nursing, oncology, and palliative care, cancer research, adequate funding, networking, and collaboration with the regional and international cancer centers, organizations, and societies, the recommendations is that policymakers in Iraq have to draw up a set of priority areas, sustained commitment at the highest level of central and local governments is required for cancer care improvement, a comprehensive academic center staffed by scientists and clinicians in all cancer care specialties is highly required. The engaged people have to be, have to set an effective monitoring mechanism for quality assurance, there is an urgent need for nationally coordinated collaborative research priority and uh, good investment from the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Higher Education and Scientific Research in the field of building highly competent and qualified human resources in cancer care, healthcare information in general, and cancer care information in particular needs to be captured in an electronic format not for a profit and even for a profit projects should be encouraged and supported. These are some of the uh, editorials and book chap 
books and chapters that I wrote with my colleagues in the last uh, 18 years, about the oncology in Iraq and the cancer care and so on. And thank you for your invitation.